Good morning, good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. How are we today? Are we all ready to praise the Lord? Yes. Are we all ready to praise His name? Amen. Well, in, in Psalms 136, uh, verse 26, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the God of, of heaven, for His loving kindness endureth forever. So th this is the very best time for us to praise and worship our living God, for our Lord is good. He is so good and His love endures forever. So let us praise the Lord today. Let us worship the Lord. Let's use our hands. Let's dance and sing for the Lord for He is worthy to be praised.
praise his amazing name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
for your grace.
you, Lord. We are here to give you the highest praise and because you deserve it, oh God. Amen. Amen. Great job, worship team. You did a great job. Praise the Lord. Amen. Think of the song, if he keeps on blessing and blessing and if he keeps on pouring it on, the Lord keeps getting richer and richer. I'll keep on singing a song. If his love gets fuller and fuller and his pra- if my prayers keep on getting through. And I forgot the last sentence, but anyway, that's okay. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we had taken up a missionary offering for uh, the mission trips for three uh, students here at the church. The last mission trip that they went on, we raised above the amount that we needed, and uh, I think it was around $3,000 more, and it was sent to the school. Uh, it was uh, an orphanage that they went to, and the money was used to buy books and supplies and and all of that. So that was where the extra money went there. So today I have, uh, we have uh, three checks for the three students from our offering, and each check is $2,600. So we have raised, again, Eva, and Jack is where? Jack. He's in hiding? Okay. And the other student is Bria. So, Eva, we want to give this on your missions trip. And this is, I don't see Bria's mom here either. And being Jack is your brother, you'll probably get it to him. Uh, I've already said to them, and I said this last year just so everybody's clear, if that mission trip is canceled or for some reason they don't go, this money comes back to the church. Did everybody hear that? Just so everybody's clear. And you can give that to Bria for us. 
So let's just stretch your hands towards them as we pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for missions and for those that will venture forth to share the gospel around the world. Lord, just not these three missionaries, but God, the missionary, the mission field itself needs prayer, needs finances. And Lord, we thank God for all the people that gave to make this possible. And that Lord, that we will continue to believe that God, you will do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we can ask or think. That at their hands and through their mouth, Lord, they will speak salvation to so many. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Amen. Amen. So, Amy. All right. Oh, it just overwhelms my heart. <laughs> um, you know, it is, it's my kids that are going, so I'm just, uh, it just overwhelms my heart. And uh, I'm just so excited for them um, to see what God is going to do. And um, we don't all get to go, but yet we're all part of going. And in your giving, we're, we're extending the, our hands. And um, it's, just, it's just awesome. Um, I just want to share one quick thing, because during worship, they were saying about the blood the blood of Jesus and the blood it just it covers us and it washes us clean and um i was i i come across this this article and i, I was reading and it was talking about the lamb's blood and we know that um Jesus is referred to as the lamb of god and it often refers to satan as a serpent and a snake and it was saying how when a snake bites a lamb that the lamb is unaffected by the snake bite and that it actually is used as an anti-venom um, that, they, that they use in anti-venom needles or whatever. Um, and I thought about this in the spiritual realm and how we are covered in the blood of the lamb and that when the, when the serpent, when the snake, when Satan tries to bite you, when he tries to attack you, when he's coming against your marriage or your relationships or your, your physical body or your finances or whatever it may be, the devil may bite you, but it will have no effect. It will have no effect because you are covered in an anti-venom blood of the lamb. Isn't that good news? It's so good. I just think it's so cool how, how in the natural, God has taken the spiritual, but yet he's applied it in the natural and how we can see it all come together. And it gives us this really beautiful picture of who Jesus is and how much he loves us. Um, anyway, I just, as we were singing with the blood, I said, oh, I just, I read about this and this is so exciting. Um, but on that note, Bring up the kids. It is time for Kids Own. Good morning. Looks like it's just you and me. <laughs> Good morning. I have a, a little video that we took last week, and I'll have, to I'll have to share it with you guys one of these weeks. And I had asked the kids at the end, I usually ask them questions, I quiz them, and then we give out prizes, right? I quiz you, and, you give, and we give out prizes. And we do this every week. But last, last week when I did it, it was a little bit crazy in there. I don't know if they had all had a lot of chocolate or what. So I just asked a simple question. I said, what did you learn today? And they all had to tell me one thing that they learned in Kid Zone. And I took a little video because it was just, I, I don't know how I hold it together sometimes. Th these kids are just, uh, they, they just touched my heart in so many ways. And, um, and this little guy, he says, I learned that with Jesus Christ in my heart, that all things are possible. And I just said, if that's all you ever take from this room, <laughs> then um, that's going to carry you through the rest of your life. So just so exciting. So stretch your hands toward the kids. In Jesus' name, God, we just pray a special blessing on them, God, that you would just um, carry them through today and through the week. Lord, that what we teach them today, Lord, that they would carry it with them for the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Do you know your way out of there? It's a maze. 
That's okay. See you, buddy. Amen. Uh, Adonai, come on up for a minute. <clears throat> Every once in a while, I'll pick on a student to give a testimony. And uh, I think I warned her <laughs> that uh, she would share a little bit. She's come all the way around the world to, uh, to be with us. And I believe that every student that comes here has a divine purpose for being here. And uh, I told her, I think two weeks ago, don't lose your smile or your confidence because God has plans for your life. So just tell everybody who you are and uh, say hello. Just a second, you'll t is it off? Sorry, I just did it on first. Chick. Praise go. the Lord, church. <laughs> My name is Adonai, like um, Pastor introduced. I am from Sri Lanka. It's a little island of uh, India. I'm not an Indian, I'm a Sri Lankan. Uh, <laughs> I am so grateful to God for bringing me here. It has been a journey getting here, but I'm glad that God placed me here uh, and has given this church wonderful pastors as well. Uh, I myself am a pastor's daughter, so I grew up in the church. I grew up doing ministry. I am so glad that um, God places like-minded spirits everywhere you go. When I came here, I wasn't um, expecting to find a church that matches up with the same spirit that I had growing up, but I'm grateful to God for placing me here today. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I, I was always uh, appreciative of the students that take, make the sacrifice of leaving where they're to to get to where we're at here, that they might, it, I know it has to do in, in the natural, there's, there's a natural destiny that we all have. But in God, you see, it supersedes that. God supersedes the purposes of man with his will. And so I believe they're here in the timing and the will of the Lord to hear a certain word because they have a certain destiny that God wants to give them. And so that's why we, we, we come. And uh, I was away last week. Uh, there was a funeral of a friend of ours and uh, that took place. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord was also there. Because in death, it's but the exit from this world into the life hereafter. And if you know where you're going, it's not a... Not a bad, a minute over there makes you glad you, you left here. <laughs> and the sorrow is here but for a season, for we have this great hope that where they're at, we shall be like them also and with them. Amen? Amen. Amen. A couple of prayer uh, things. I know that uh, prayer request, uh, people have mentioned uh, uh, people in the hospital today, uh, Kim's in the hospital. Uh, Joe's sister said was in the hospital. Might know somebody here today that's in the hospital. You might even be here today and you're just really suffering. You came to church, but you're suffering. You have sickness right with you right now. Uh, if that's you, and we're going to pray for these requests, but if that's you today and you said, you know, I need a touch in my physical body, uh, you can stand up and we'll, we'll pray for you. We believe uh, as you stand that we're going to believe that you'll have a miracle in the house today. We had worship. Let's have a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you feel that today in your heart that you need a miracle in your physical body, you stand up and uh, we'll pray for you and we'll also remember these requests that came in. So Father, today we bow in your presence because we believe that where the presence of the Lord is, there's freedom. Amen. And so Lord, sickness is something that binds us. Sickness is so no disease. It's a, it's, a, it's a weapon of the enemy that comes against us and no weapon formed against us can prosper. For, Lord, we believe in the healing power. The blood we sang about, the stripes he took, was for our healing. And so, Lord, may that be ministered to the congregation today and those that are in the hospital today, laying in a hospital bed, suffering with a disease, that, God, may you enter that room by your Spirit. And, Lord, minister healing and health and wholeness, God, to all and one and one and all, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, the men's 
breakfast, which is in two weeks, is right here on a Friday morning. And uh, they're taking uh, registration back there for all the men that would have liked to go to that. And it's $10, which is just covers the cost off the food. So you're allowed to eat $10 worth, whatever that, <laughs> whatever that amount is. Hallelujah. And everybody's doing good. I met some brand new people today. You're just your first time here. Nice to have you here. Thanks for coming out. Uh, appreciate you being here. Let's give them a hand. At, uh... Amen. And it's St. Patrick's Day for all the people in green. Green. Some people in green. I looked at a green hat yesterday and I almost bought it. I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it would have went, didn't it, Alice? We looked at it together. We looked, and that's in a nice big green bow tie, too. And I thought, well, you know. And I wanted to be, I didn't, I didn't want it to be a distraction to the attraction that we have for Jesus. And so, so some things are fun and all the rest of it. Also, uh, there's a big curling thing going on in, in Sydney. And to think that in, I looked it up, 1541 was the first curling game in in uh, in Scotland and uh the with the prizes and everything else so that's uh now it's 2024 and the world of curling has come to Sydney K Breton here to to be here so this is uh years later and the Canadian team is winning 2 2 to 0 against they played against and they play again this afternoon so we'll all have to pray and believe God uh Hallelujah. Amen. It's great to have, uh, I feel that church should be our living room. Uh, we all go home to our own houses and after the service and all that. But church should be the place where it feels like the living room. I'm living here. Um, these are my friends. This is my family. And uh, I'll often say to people, uh, feel at home when you come to the church. It's supposed to feel like family. Uh, the great thing about family is relationship. That, that's the part that we all long to have with family, with spouse, with children, is a healthy relationship. And sometimes that's missing because of circumstances and situations. And it's good to come into the house of God where it's a family that no matter where you're from, uh, you're, as far as a nation goes, a color of skin, a gender, all of that stuff, it, we come together as one in the family of God. The Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. And so that's a great thing to have today. I'm glad where I grew up. I grew up in a not a good environment, and I'm glad that God's no respecter of persons. Because if he was, he wouldn't have accepted me. How many know that he wouldn't have accepted you if he was looking for good character, good person, and, and, and he wouldn't have said, oh, now there's somebody. No, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not that way. And, and so not only is it that he... Uh, we, we, the, only, the only requirement, I, I, funny with the God, but the only requirement that he has for you is that you believe that he is. Yeah, he, the only thing that he looks for, do you believe that God is? And he is a rewarder of those who seek him or diligently seek him. And so hopefully as a church, when we come together, it's for the purpose of seeking God. Not just seeing who's here. Not just, not just looking around and saying, oh, so-and-so's not here today. Oh, look at, the, oh, look at that nice jacket the pastor has on today. No, it's not, about, it, it, it's not about the exterior of the why we meet, but we've come to seek God, that we might find God, that we might live a blessed life. How many want to live a blessed life? I want, I want to live a blessed, I want to be blessed going in and coming out. I want to be blessed in the field and in the city. I want to be blessed coming and going. I want to be blessed. And the blessing does not have to do with the present condition I'm in because the blessing supersedes that. It's what I believe. Uh, uh, some people, their biggest problem is themselves. Some, some people, it's not the voices around you that have condemned you. It's not those voices. Those voices, yes, there's voices. How many people here have ever felt that somebody condemned you? Like, nobody over here. Anybody over here? Okay, we got a few over here. I'm going to preach over here now. That, 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 
See, so the voice of condemnation, the devil's job is to condemn you. How many know he's a good worker? He's, a, he's probably high in the list of workers. And, and, and so he knows that it's his job to be a condemner or to judge the church and the people in the church. So we all stand in judgment off or by the devil to condemn us. But there's no condemnation. Come on, somebody. There's no condemnation to those that come into Christ. So once I believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those, see, I believe that he rewards us. I'm not just coming to church by myself to be here by myself, but I believe he rewards me when I leave here. I believe that everybody I meet is a reward. I believe that everybody I meet is my friend. Now, I have been lied to a few times, but I, I, it doesn't change what I believe. The next person I meet, I believe that the potential of friendship is there before I think opposite to that. See, some people aren't friendly because they've been hurt. And it's not that I haven't been hurt. How many people have been hurt? See, it, it's not the absence of pain. It's the love of Jesus that's been shed abroad in my heart that how can I help but love people whom God already loves? If I say I love him whom I can't see, how can I say I, don't, I, I hate people whom I can see? I have to love people whom I can see, and in turn I love God. So my act of loving others is really the proof that I love God. So people that hate other people say, well... <laughs> Should I say that? Yes, I'm just... <laughs> okay, here it is. The truth will set you free. Either your circumstances are a lie, or God is a lie. You have to choose this day whom you will serve. See, you have to choose whether your circumstances supersede the power of God, or God supersedes the power of your circumstances. Amen. So when you betray your circumstances above God, you have to call God a liar. Hallelujah. That's what I thought, Lord, when you told me that. I thought, everybody's going to go quiet. I'm not going to hear no amens. But the truth is, and that'll set you free, that you have to stop denying God and confessing your problem. You have to stop speaking doubt over your own life because it's your own voice is the most powerful voice in your life. And it's not what others say to you, it's what you say to yourself. And so for as for me and my house, what I declare, and I appreciate when Amy gets up, you know, we raised Amy and, 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 and spoke into her life over and over and over again. I remember her as not even a toddler, just a baby in the crib. And going in and laying my hands on her and prophesying over her and speaking that one day she will proclaim the voice of the Lord, the word of God will come out of her mouth. And she stands up now and she says, and the Lord was telling me this. And I'm thinking, hallelujah, praise God. God's not a liar. God, 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 is, God is exempt from lying. He cannot lie. He can only speak truth. And when he speaks, it's the truth. And so uh, getting saved, and this is... Uh, years ago, and, and when I'm watching the church over the years, uh, it's it, and watching other churches and watching, you know, like you're. I feel I'm here, and part of being here is to observe what God is doing on the earth. And part of the thing I I see is that they they'll say, well, once a church gets generation and generation and generation, and Al's parents, and then us and then Amy and then Amy's children and it's like, you know, where are they at in the, do they even believe? You see, it's possible to act like a Christian. I know this is far-fetched. It's, it's, it's possible to be a Christian by association instead of biblical application. See, you must be. You, you, you can't just come to church. You can't just sit in church and say, I must be going to heaven because I go to church. Because that's what some churches tell you. Some churches tell you, well, the fact that you come here, you're going to heaven. Well, you can come here all you want. It's a hall. We don't even have stained glass windows. I mean, we, we don't have all the decorations and all the things that go to And if this looks like heaven, we're all in trouble. But, that, 
But the truth will set you free. It's not about the decorations around us. It's about the Christ that lives within us that causes us to have salvation, causes us to be the redeemed, the born again. And we are peculiar people. Stop trying to be normal. We, we, we are peculiar. The Bible says we are a peculiar people. We do not fit in there, but we should fit in. Come on, somebody. We should fit in the family of God. There's but two families on the earth. There's the natural family that you were born in, and there's the spiritual family that you had a rebirth in and came into the family of God. But two families. And so the reason that we come to here is to gather together to seek God, to pray one for another, to encourage one another. That, that we believe what we believe and we firmly believe it. And what I see with uh, what we've seen in the news or, and, and the churches in the last I don't know how many years, 30, 40 years, then back farther. Fundamental things that they once believed, they no longer hold. They no longer hold it. And how did that happen? I went to a church a little while ago, and, and, I, and it was a church that I would have called it an evangelical church. But it would have been a mistake, but that's what I would have called it. And, and I said to the person afterwards, I said, uh, you folks here preach the born again message. She said, hell no. I said, maybe hell go, but not hell no. But a fundamental belief, a fundamental, a fun, the only way into salvation, there's no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. There's no other possibility but to be born again. It's it. It's a, and so you can have the biggest church in town with the biggest congregation in town, but if you must be, come on somebody, you must be born again. You must be. It's, 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 it's not an option on the package. You know, like go to this church and... 8,000 other people go to this church. God doesn't, God doesn't look at the statistics around you. He looks as Christ is in you. Amen. We sang about the blood today being applied and the sure foundation and, and the sure foundation for not only for, for that, but for God in so many ways that over the years, churches have drifted away from that fundamental truth of Salvation by faith. Amen. They've, they've drifted away from holiness. Acts of holiness. Things that, things that when I got saved, I would think, well, that's just going to live a normal Christian life. And, a, and I used to think this. I used to think that holiness was a collective thing. We all come together and, yeah, we, we all come together and, are you holy? Yeah, I'm holy. Are you holy? Oh, yeah, I'm holy. <laughs> Oh, we got a holy bunch here. Yeah, we're all holy. And the standard of holiness was structured by the leadership of whatever group you were with. So this was holy. This was okay to do. That's not okay to do. Don't go to shows. Don't go to... No bingo, no bingo. Okay, no. And, and so this holiness was made by the circumstances of the people we're in or by the, the vote of the majority. And yet God does not look at holiness as having anything to do with do's and don'ts. If you're holy and you want to serve God, you just won't do those. Th it's not a matter that we have to dictate it or legislate it or say, oh, no, you can't do that. Boy. You know, down the road, God. We, we believe that the Holy Spirit of God sets the standard of holiness for the house. And I'm not junior Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. I'm not Christian cop. But my relationship is to be with God, and my holiness is to Him. My, to, to, first of all, my holiness, my life is to Him. I said to Alice, we were married. I forget how long we were married, but I said to Alice, I said, Alice, uh, this came to my revelation. You know, I said, I said Alice, uh, you never have to worry about me uh, cheating on you. Well, that was comforting to know, you know. <laughs> I, said, I said, and it has nothing to do with you. Took the smile right off her face, just like that. 
I said, it's not my covenant that I made with you, but it's my covenant that I made with God. Amen. See, it's, and I said, and I, and I said, Alice, our covenant is like this. It's like an umbrella, but God's covenant is like this. How big is God? Stretch your hands as far as you can. And if you see nail pierced in your hands, that's how much he loves you. And so our holiness, our walk with God is based on our relationship with God. And what happens is, as I think over time, we lose the relationship with God and still hold credentials with men. In other words, we do what's right to please the audience, but we don't do what's right to please God. And so over time, I've seen all kinds of things, and I thought, I thought they were smarter than that. Have you ever said that about somebody? You know, they, I say here, if you fall down, just get up and brush your knees off and keep going. Because we all fall down. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he rises again. How many rising again people do we have today that you have fallen down? It's true, but you rise again. You will not stay down. You will not be kept down because no weapon formed against you can prosper. But you just dust yourself off and say, here I am, Lord. I know I made a mistake, but a mistake doesn't make me a mistake. It just means I made a mistake and I'm not a mistake. I'm serving God. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to buckle up and keep going. Come on. Hallelujah. The sad part can be if such generations ago, forefathers died for their faith, and we have people today that won't live for their faith. A great price was paid, and Jesus paid the ultimate price, and his followers are not asked to die for him, not, in, not here anyway. We're asked to follow him. And I think that sometimes... Sometimes persecution causes us to be more committed to God than the easy road that we all pray for. Lord, send me some easy money. Money I didn't earn. Just use that magic wand of yours, God, and dub somebody somewhere. They'll hear about our circumstances and our situation. And we have this fantasy. See, see, reality is always different than fantasy. And reality is found in the Word of God. I, I, said, this to, I said this to someone who I was talking to about this process of grieving. And I said, because the person said, I really want to know what happened. I really want to know what happened. I really must know what happened, why this person died. I really, really have to know. And I said, if you needed to know, God would have told you. But you want to know. He shall supply all of your needs, not all of your wants. How many people would have liked to have had an answer for something that happened? How many would like to have, I, I just wish I would have known. I just wish I could have understood. I wish I would have heard that. But God's a God that'll tell you everything you need to know. And then what he didn't, what he didn't tell you is an area where you need to trust. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. I thought about uh, Samson, because Samson in his lifetime, I know you're all wondering, is he ever going to come up with a scripture here? The, uh, Samson definitely started off as a man of God. He was 20 years, he was a judge for God in the nation of Israel. And to be appointed to be a judge is a pretty high ranking. It's like, you know, he was appointed to be the Pope. He was he was the governing, ruling voice of God in the nation. And uh, you would think that with that forefront and growing up in a believing home, he grew up in the right home, he grew up in the right situation, you would think that he would have done okay in life. But you see, he had a trouble with call girls. Read the book. I'm in the book, everybody. I know you don't like sometimes in the book, but the book says that was his trouble and several women that he was with caused his downfall. And his greatest downfall was a girl by the name of, she was the assistant hairdresser at some shop. That's, that's what she did for a living. But, but she was willing to betray for money. 
You'd be surprised at the amount of people that will lie over money, will betray over money. And she tried to convince him to give, him the, give her the secret to his strength. When you, when you think that something is a secret, it's obviously that his appearance wasn't physical enough for her just to look at how strong he was and say, well, that's the reason right there. Look at him. He's the rock. He's, he's, he's whoever you want to think he is. But she tried to find out his secret. And, and, and so she tried the first time and it didn't work. And she tried the second time. And then she tried the third time. And no three times. The fourth time's a charm. The, the, the thing is, is that the enemy... The first time he attacks you, sometimes it's easy to say no. But over time, from generation to generation, we can lower our standard because we don't want to be rejected. We want our children to love us so they're Christians by association instead of biblical application. We, we, can, we can compromise our stand uh, Samson was willing to compromise his stand instead of stand without, comp without compensation to anything else around him. But it grew on him. He did one thing wrong, and then he did another thing wrong. And It's funny how wrong becomes right if you do it long enough. I told you before about smoking and how I used to go down in the woods about, you know, four miles from the house. Three months later, I was under the kitchen window. That... that because, because sometimes we wear down the problem so small that it's no problem to us and we don't understand why somebody else is having a problem with us. Yet holiness is a standard that God requires. Yes. And it's, it's, a, it's a standard that should go home with you. I don't want to get up here and speak. Or, and, and, and for years I sat in the pew. I was a pew person. And, and I didn't want to sit and listen to somebody speak and go home with nothing. And just, well, it's a historical document. And he's not saying anything I can live by. I want to get up here and proclaim a living, prosperous word of God that you can change your home by it. You can change where you work by it. You can believe God for it. You can continue to believe that no matter what your circumstances, you are more than a conqueror through Christ who called you. And so it's, it's not just a, a, a hearing a word, but it's applying a word when you leave here that you're a better person for it. There's people sitting here that... You came here and you were sick and you're well today. You're better. I talked to Martin this morning and, and he was in the prayer room and he came up and talked to me for a minute and, and I, said, uh, I said, I said, Martin, I don't see any wheelchair anywhere in this room. <laughs> but a few months ago, the doctor told him he's going to be in a wheelchair and uh, he's doing real good. Amen. But there's something about faith that changes the fact to be in our favor. Faith changes the facts so that the facts become in our favor. How many can use that? Yes. Hallelujah. So apply faith where you need it. So in Judges chapter 16, let's just stand for a minute. This will change your position for the last half of the game. And uh, it says, when, uh, when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, this is the fourth time around, she sent and she called to the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Uh, then, he, then she lured him to sleep on her knees and called for the men and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him. And his strength left him. I, I wondered why that sentence was in the scriptures. I said, see, I think what happened is he fell asleep and she pinched him. <laughs> and when she pinched him, he said, ow. <laughs> he never said ow before. <laughs> and she knew his strength left him because he should have never said ow under the power of God. Watch this. You should never say how. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Under the power of God. And so 
Uh, and she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from the sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. And the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetter and he became a grinder in the prison of the enemy. Father, uh, help us to hold up the banner of holiness that, Lord, that we don't lay our head in the wrong lap. But, God, we stand firm in the foundation of our faith, believing today. We are believers in this room, so we believe today for the power of God for each of us and for our children and our children's children. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Grab a seat and buckle up for the... Hallelujah. It's sad when someone falls. It's always... And, and over, over time when I've heard of ministers and priests, people that I knew, uh, just... And, and I was... I knew that they knew. Like, I heard them preach. I... It was just always sad, and, I, and, and I, that would be my first response. But they know better. How many people here would say, I, I did know better? <laughs> Nobody. I knew, well, just one person down there, that's it. In other words, all you that have done wrong, you didn't know about it. You just, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. You'll say, the devil made me do it. I'm Flip Wilson. I'm going to say, the devil made me do it. But the truth is that most often, we gradually get to the place where we're convinced that what we're doing is okay. We, we get, yeah. It's okay to be angry at my spouse and holler and scream. It's okay. God understands that she provoked me. It's okay for the, 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 the woman to do certain things or say certain things because, well, he's my husband. You see, sometimes close relationships do not give us a license to sin. In fact, it gives us a, a permission to act godly in that situation. Amen. And when we fail in the most intimate situations, we're failing God. And the blessing that adds rich. You see, you see, uh, Samson had this great ability that his character and his physical stance was not where his power came from. I said that a minute ago. He said, it wasn't that he looked so tough. But when God came upon him, the Bible says he was walking down the road and a lion came out to devour him. And just his bare hands, he grabs the lion, tears him in two. That's pretty good. Another place, 30 soldiers came around him and said, we're going to kill you. Well, they did die and that was it. You know, that was the 30 soldiers died. Another place, a thousand soldiers came up against him and it said all he had was the jawbone of an ass and he killed all thousands of them. How many know you got to be with God pretty good to? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And then another place it says he, gra he grabbed the, the gates of the city, the big steel gates of the city, put them on his shoulder and carried them away. In the times previous to this, when Delilah said, you know, what's your strength? Well, tie me up with seven cords and, 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 and that'll be it. That God won't be with me then. It was a lie. So when the Philistines came, he just pulled the cords apart. No problem. Until he cut his relationship off with God. Well, he had help with that. Sometimes you don't know what the enemy's doing. is actually trying to cut you off from the source of your power. He's trying to diminish you to a degree that if he can't separate the God from blessing you, he can separate you from receiving the blessing. He can, he can have you in such a place that where the blessing is being poured out, meant to be on your family, on your children, on your children's children, that the Holy Spirit of God is meant to be upon all flesh, that your sons and daughters should prophesy, and your old men should dream dreams. Like the word of God hasn't changed unless you've tried to change the word of God. It's absolutely true today. Yeah. One of the great things, I mentioned this a long time ago. One of the great things I discovered when I got saved was that God was real. Yeah. 
totally amazed me. Because I went from the part that, uh, you know, God's a figment of our imagination and, he, you know, there's some reality to it. You know, somebody must be in charge. And then I went to the place, no, there's nothing. I remember growing up as a teenager, if you would have put me on a lie detector test and said, do you believe there's a God? I said, no, there's not. I would have been telling you the truth. So when I met God and I accepted Jesus as my Savior, the great amazement was is that He was real. Because I was so far lost that when I got found, to whom much is forgiven, much is required. You see, there was no question in my mind after that. I was going around talking, God's real. To everybody, you know, God's real. They all thought I was crazy. I was the finally came to be sane. I was crazy. I was crazy enough to hang around with those crazy people. I was crazy enough to be in the crazy crowd. And in the crazy crowd, nobody bothered with the crazy crowd because they didn't know what they were going to do to you when they got crazy. But so I joined the church. Now, I can't say that all the crazy people stayed in the world, but, <laughs> but I heard somebody say, you know the 2,000 pigs that Jesus cast the evil spirit into and how they all jumped into the ocean? Some of them came ashore in North Sydney. <clears throat> Samson had everything going for him. He had everything going for him, but he lost everything because he continued to compromise. He, he continued to compromise our faith, his faith in God. You see, he was born a Jew, so he had natural birth, brought him into the kingdom. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, because Nicodemus came along, he was a priest in the temple, he was a, a, a high up official, and he said to Jesus, and he came to Jesus by night. Somebody said he came by night because he was embarrassed. I don't think, I just think he came by night because it was nighttime. I came by night, I wasn't embarrassed. I, I just think that all the people should come when they got an opportunity to come. Yes. He came by night. That was his opportunity. What about you? When did you come? Yes. Don't judge him for coming at night. You might come this morning. <laughs> I hope you do. That's the whole purpose of being here, right. is that people would come to know God and serve God. And so, 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 so Samson had, had used his strength for good things, but yet the enemy used his very strength because he had a, a problem in his flesh. Now, I said his problem was call girls. What's your problem? Because we all have one. We all have an area that we wish we were stronger in. We all have an area that we wish that we could do better in. We all wish our marriage could be better or we could be a better mom, a better dad. We all wish that we could be a better person in some way or another. There's always some vice that's always holding us back. And, and so for him, it was that. But it, see, that's not, my question is not uh, what was his problem. It's that he lost out over his problem. I don't want you to lose out over your problem. I want you to be set free delivered in a sound state of mind, serving God, and living a blessed life. To everyone that comes to this, the Fellowship Church, my desire is for you to serve God, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and live a blessed life. That's, that's, that's the desire, and that's the desire of the church. And so, uh, uh, sometimes our strength is our blind spot. And that's the way it was. That's the way it was for, for Samson. It was his strength. You see, he, he had such great strength. It was a great, uh, a great way to uh, go through life. You know, people look at him and say, oh, there's Samson. Don't want to mess with him. And yet, on the other hand, he had, and you read other Bible characters, other Bible stories, they had their share of problems. And it's not that we come to church to to, to uh, isolate these people and say uh, that was their problem, but though they serve God. Everyone here, everyone here is, is a part and parcel of having an enemy that tempts us. You, you can't live life and not be tempted. You, you just can't. The question is, are you an overcomer or not? What have you overcome? 
And that's an ongoing process that, that we live for God and we continue to believe for God and we continue to believe that the, that the Holy Spirit will help us and that uh, we know that God doesn't go by popular opinion, but he goes by the work of the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, you know, uh, what's the Holy Spirit? And, and they say, that well, speaking in tongues is part of the Holy Spirit and uh, prophecy is part of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Lord showed me... Uh, a vision, this is a long time ago, and, and uh, I looked out into the parking lot, I believe I said this before, and there was uh, nine different vehicles out in the parking lot. One was a Corvette, so how many of was it? And, and one was a, a minibus, and one was a, a truck, a really souped up truck, maybe a Ram, like, uh, you know, Josh drives, and, but it was, it was all of these, and, and so I looked out in the parking lot, and it was all these beautiful cars, and Mercedes, and all these things. And then, on the, then beside me, there was a little one of these key ring racks. And all nine vehicles, the keys were hanging there. And the Lord said, take one for a drive. <laughs> I said, okay. And I reached, and as soon as I touched the keys that I wanted to take the drive with, the vehicle that was the vehicle, it's just like somebody hit pause on the, on the vision. Just pause. And the Lord said, why'd you pick that one? I said, because that's the one I would like to drive. He said, but I've given you all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. But you tend to drive the one you like. And I said, God, I'll try to be more faithful and use the vehicle that I need for the moment I'm in. I'll make sure I grab healing when somebody needs to be healed. When somebody needs a word of knowledge, I'll take the word of knowledge off the, and I'll drive that vehicle. Because I did not receive a gift, I received the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is all things to all men, whereby he might win some. And so it's important that as, as a church, we continue to believe that salvation comes by faith for the children that are sitting here. You know, I don't want them down the, you know, 30, 40 years from now, people sit in the fellowship church and say, oh, I'm, I'm a Christian because I come to this church. No, you must be born again. Amen. I come to this church and, uh, well, you know, we don't believe in that Holy Spirit stuff anymore. Well, you know, I don't want our children or our grandchildren to ever say that. I'm glad last summer when Jack uh, was at youth and listening to uh, a song, he started to weep and started to speak in other tongues. Like that to me is the essence of the gospel is, is that it's, it's to help all of us become all things to all men. And it's all true. And so salvation is not a collective thing. It's an individual thing. The Holy Spirit is individual to each one of us. On each one of us was clothed in tongues of fire in the upper room. Paul asked a group of people that were all Christians. He said in Acts 19, he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He said, We haven't even heard of the Holy Ghost. He said, we got baptized in water in Jesus' name. Oh, that was good. But there is a Holy Spirit. And he laid hands on them and they all received the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. So it's not a collective thing. It's an individual thing. And you have the portion that you need from the God that you serve. And I would say to you today, keep seeking Keep asking, keep pressing in, because the God that gave you what he gave you before will do it again and again and again and again and again and again. That's the kind of God that we serve. So, Father, today we bow in your presence. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity it's been for me to share my heart with hearts of people. Thank you for the people that sit here today. God, you know how much I appreciate and love them. But, Lord, I ask that we would all consider our faith. And we would all consider the relationship, the personal relationship, that I'm not a Christian because I come to a Christian church, but I'm a Christian because I've asked Christ to be my Savior. And so, Lord, I ask the, the Savior of the earth to be in this room today, that if there's anyone here that does not know you, they won't leave and say, well, you know, that was a good word. Oh, it was encouraging. No, the, the word has been given that it would, not, that it would accomplish something. And for you today, 
may it accomplish salvation. For you today, may it accomplish healing. For you today, may it accomplish restoration in your mind. Lord, for you today, may it cause your feet to be healed and, and, and for you to rise up and walk. For you today, may it accomplish that which the Word has been sent forth to do. So I pray today. Yes, I use Jesus' name, applying the blood of the Lamb, the blood of sacrifice, whereby men can be saved. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, He already paid the price for your salvation, but you do have to receive Him in order to have salvation. The salvation is not by association, but by biblical application. So I'd like to pray. If you would, if our heads are bowed, but if you would raise your hand and say, Pastor, remember to pray for me for salvation. I need, I need to know that I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. I just don't come to church, but I'm a believer. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you here. Thank you. The power of salvation. The power of God calling to the heart today. So if you raised your hand today, if you would just stand where you're, where you're, where you're seated, just stand up and I'll pray. So as you stand, I'm going to pray for you that the salvation of God. Lord, I thank you for those that would stand. And, and take a stand for God. Having done all, stand. That they believe in their heart. And now by standing, they are confessing that they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you would come into each heart for each person that stands, that they are taking a stand for God and they would serve God the rest of the days of their life. That Jesus, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, if you're here today and you need the Holy Spirit, you say, I'm a Christian. But you know, I, I haven't really, I haven't really embraced the Holy Spirit. You say that's me today, and you'd like to stand. I'll ask you to stand now, and 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 I'll pray for you. That Paul prayed, and they received the Holy Spirit. So if you say that's just something I'd like to have too, I'd like to have that portion. I'd like to have the third person in the Trinity in my life. It says He'll lead you into all truth. And so, Lord, I pray for those that would stand today for that. That God, as they stand today, the Holy Spirit would come. And I just believe that the, the, the infilling of the Spirit of God would be upon them, that from this moment forward, the Spirit would start to speak to them, whether it be at uh, morning, noon, night, through the night, God, your Holy Spirit would do a work in their life, in their home and in their family, God, that, Lord, this would be fully accomplished, that God, in Jesus' name today, in Jesus' name, and can we all stand together now? Uh, and if I could borrow your hand, could you put your hand on yourself? Uh, Lord, I thank you for every person here. And, and Lord, as, the, as you have lent me your hand today to put your, my hand on you, I believe in Jesus' name to touch and agree that as you touch yourself and we agree together, the Bible says if two of you shall agree as touching anything, well, I believe for their miracle today. I believe for their blessing today. I believe that we're living a blessed life because of our faith in God. And so, Lord, for everyone here, may we experience a blessed life this week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for being here today. God bless you.